Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to something you can do in your left hand to accompany pretty much any melody which you are faced with, whether the melody is like classical or folk or a nursery rhyme or a rock song or a pop song or a fusion song and the list goes on. So it's really simple, but at the same time, there are a few, you know, uh, intricacies about it and when you start bringing in the right hand that's where the challenges occur so I'm not going to give you a specific uh, thing to play or a specific thing to learn or a scale or a melody as such until the very end of the video so stay tuned till the very end there'll be a, a, a tutorial there'll be a melody at the end which we'll re uh, which we are going to also notate and keep on our patreon and you'll have my notes for the whole lesson of course so in order to do this lesson it'll be nice if you can also bring out your sustain pedal the sustain pedal will be very helpful while playing along because you need that intricacy um, you'll also maybe need to play along with me in the video I'll be just going through a lot of options and uh, yeah you can do a lot of songs using this technique uh, I'll try and just do that but remember at the end of the lesson we are going to learn something specific so stay tuned and uh, before we get cracking it'll be great if you could hit that subscribe button to stay tuned to all the lessons we regularly put out on our channel hit that bell for notifications give our video a like a share leave us a comment with what you thought and what you'd like to learn next and if you'd like something more structured there are quite a few lessons which are on youtube as well as listed neatly in a chronological order on our website and uh, you will have access to books which i have written to supplement our piano foundation piano intermediate music theory year training or you could just pick up everything for life as we call it we have a bundle which is there on our site so nathanielschool.com is where you'd like to be so let's get down to what the left hand is doing because this lesson is primarily about an engine which you are trying to develop in the left hand. So if you take let's say G, it's really simple. The first thing I want you to try and work out is go up a perfect fifth from this G. What's the perfect fifth? Well the circle of fifths can be very helpful for that purpose. That will be D. G A B C D in the G major scale right so you could do G D and the exercise or the pattern in the left hand would be okay so what I like about this way of playing first off if you move your head one two three four so you see the thumb of the left hand is not really coinciding with your head movement right it's playing at the off beats at the off quaver beats and two, and three and four and one and two, and three and okay another intricacy is the pinky finger of the left hand which is not lifting i could have so easily lifted the guy but no the pinky finger is holding and the third thing which you can't see physically but you can see it in the diagram is the pedal so you can use the sustain pedal which is that one and basically sustain whatever you're playing so right so step one get the pattern one and two and three and four and one and two let's do that without bothering about the pedal let's do that together one and two and three and four and okay two three four one and two and three and four and one okay now slowly but surely try to uh, squeeze in your pinky finger try to hold that in one and two and three you see the pinky is actually playing on a semi brief so there's a little bit of finger independence if you want to call it that going on during this exercise one and two and three and four the pinky has to ring you hear that ringing okay now to make it a bit more legato bring in your pedal 
get the awesome harmonics of the sustain pedal and you just get a sustain so the notes come together in a nice way and this is a fifth chord so it's going to always sound good there's no collision of frequencies in the left hand so this is the pattern now along with this a nice strategy to start off with the right hand before you start playing your favorite melodies is go through all the basic non division uh, rhythm uh, rhythm notation so you start with semi breves which is one note for this whole bar and let's say i'm in the key of g major i just play g maybe just whack the g 3 so that's a semi breve in the right hand you can play around with it pretty much every note sounds good because you're not playing a major chord in the left hand or the minor chord it works with everything start with semi breves and see if you can press and hold your pedal that'll make a lot of impact i'm also using octaves which is quite nice in the right hand now you could do minims which is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and any note in the g major scale for now and you could also be in the g minor scale that's the power of the fifth chord works with anything okay then you can do a crotchet and then a dotted minim If you want to get more aggressive or more intense in the left hand you can do you can do a minim in the with the pinky you don't have to do semi breve hold and wait you could do minims or you could do dotted minims if it's a 3 by 4 song 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 2 3 1 2 3 especially when you're playing a 3 by 4 like that okay so you could do dotted minims with the pinky semi breve start with that that will be easy then you can do minims dotted minims and you know you could even that will be boring if you just do crotchets because then it's just like your alternating between the two fingers so semi breves with the pinky only 2 3 then minims 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 dotted minims 1 2 3 4 for a mostly a 3 4 song to remember this is still playing those off beat quavers and and all the ands basically coming back to the right hand so we've done semi breve or whole note 
for four counts two minims then we've done dotted minim and a crotchet then we'll do crotchet and a dotted minim that's done uh, then what else is remaining we can do the normal pulse like uh, uh, crotchets so quite easy if you ask me 3 4 then you could mix it up mix up a minim with two crotchets and look at all the permutations do uh, one minim meets two crotchets i'd leave the notes to you and the scale up to you we are just committing to the key of g then we could do like two crotchets followed by a minim Put the minim in the middle. Crotch it, minim, crotch it. So, if you want to train your ear, you can actually try to play. as you sing like play something and sing it at the same time but follow the rhythmic framework of what you're trying to achieve let's say i go back to minim meets two crotchets and try to sing it as you go along on the keys la ra 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 ri ta ra ri ti ro ra 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 ti so it becomes very musical cuz it's coming from you from your body to prove it you can also like sing it don't play the piano for one bar ta ra 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 play that now sing something la ra ra what what i find fun is to sing two bars so you could probably put two of those bars together like maybe a dotted minim dotted minim and a crotchet following with two minims let's see how that sounds so la 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 by the way i'm singing it and playing this left hand thing it's quite tricky you should try it out la 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 b a d and play what you just sung now what can we do la ra ra ri ra So that's the technique. Now, why did I tell you to do all of these like rather mathematically formed rhythms? There are eight, by the way. If you choose to not divide the beat and then combine semi-breves, minims, crotchets, and dotted minims over a bar of four by four, you're going to get eight permutations, right? And we've covered all the eight so far in this video. Now moving forward what we can start doing is this can equip us hopefully it has already equipped us with the skill of playing a melody in the right hand with this very very cool and uh, you know workable rhythm in the left hand which is built 
strangely enough with just two notes and it sounds really workable because it's adding to the rhythm party you know it's playing the off beat so i figured this will work for a lot of uh, ideas so slowly but surely you can build this to popular tunes like maybe this one gets slightly tricky to maintain the left hand at the off beat and to hold that pinky and the pedal sounds really good for folk songs something change the notes so you can actually build up all your fifth chords in the g scale so you watch the b's the white note going to black note that will be b's fifth c d E, F sharp, F sharp. You have to be careful. F sharp doesn't form a perfect fifth with any note because it's in the G scale. The seventh degree, the fifth will be a tritone. So, F to the C, F sharp to the C. So these are all your fifths. Okay. A, B, C. F sharp tritone Yeah you could just work this out Now you can explore a lot more options about this technique is even in the left hand you can go quite deep so there's a rhythm component there's a bass component there's a lot of body because i'm holding that finger and it doesn't sound muddy at all because i'm not playing major and minor chords which tend to sound muddy it's just a fifth sound so if you play let's say like an a if you play like an a with its fifth e you assume like it's an a minor chord right which anyway your melody will tend to carry so let's say you you develop a pattern i like that pattern b g with its fifth a e more notes basically
lot of songs which have also used this technique like let's say you take this one just a bit of that the forest gum theme isn't it slightly tricky to actually get that going maybe we should do another video on this later anyway so you see it's quite scalable you can play a lot of uh, a lot of material why don't we try taking a couple of songs which may not really have this technique but could still work um l- let's also look at it in a 3 by 4 context because i think that is also very interesting so if you take 2 3 1 2 3 stuff right so i just wanted to make this technique a bit bit more bulletproof so you can play a bigger volume of music so this works great if a chord is major or minor right but then what if the chord is not major or minor what if it's like a diminished chord well a diminished chord i already told you you play the root with the tritone instead of the perfect fifth Uh, another thing i like to do is what if you wanted to play a g major or, or let's say you want to play a d major without the d in the bass but maybe with another note in the bass it's a very common thing to do uh, like an f sharp in the bass see this is a d major chord what is its third f sharp so if i create this as a slash chord i want f sharp down below so how do i make it a two note technique So this is D major slash F sharp in the left hand. So let's just toggle between. F sharp or D over F sharp played like this. So how do you do that? You take a D major chord, knock off the fifth, take the third and whack it in the bottom. and hold the third and then back to our g major which is the one check that out so you have your one and the five and you can then do the four chord which is c major but again invert it by playing c e only but then move the e here ignore the g because you just are allowed two notes in this technique so that's g with a d bass there that's its fifth conclusion you can play the left hand uh, pattern either with a fifth chord or with a slash chord so this would be a d major chord with an f sharp bass then you can play a d major with an a bass which carries that f sharp on top then d major with an f sharp bass carries the f sharp in the bottom there we go and good old d major so d major d fifth 
d slash f sharp again d slash a because a is in the bottom so depending on the chord you have your voicing here and uh, the last way to kind of uh, mess with this technique is what if you have have a seventh chord like a dominant seventh chord you know so you know the the key ingredients of a dominant seventh chord would be its root and its dominant seventh which is the flat seven d versus c d going to c so so you can get this cool descending pattern so this would be like a dominant 7 or a major 7 so that would be like a augmented chord if you want to look at it that way so you what are we trying to do basically a triad and a seventh chord these chords have a lot of notes they have three or four or a lot of notes so you're trying to tell yourself i will play only two of those notes in the left hand but im imagine it and study it and use it just like a triad or a extension or a seventh chord but you are allowed to use only two notes here and we hope that the melody will carry through by playing any way it will play those notes which you've missed out in the left hand so it declutters the left hand the left hand is a lot nicer and cleaner and it brings out that rhythm it brings out that so the audience is more feeling that rhythm and the harmony is just about enough for feeling the emotion which the song needs to carry so that's about the technique guys let's just revise it and as i told you at the very beginning stay tuned i'm going to teach you a tune which will work with this entire technique it's going to cover pretty much whatever we covered in in the whole lesson most of the lesson was about the g scale then i wandered off i think i went into some forest gum theme which i think is the exact same concept uh, so that's a bonus you can learn that song and uh, yeah you can leave me a comment and maybe i'll do a video of that specific thing so but the technique is really really powerful you can you know let's just actually have some fun before i summarize it uh Let's just play some songs which may not really warrant this technique. Maybe let's see. Hmm. Could work, right?
I'm overdoing it. I'm trying to play a Nirvana song this way. But anyway, you get the idea. So what I'm going to do now is uh, don't, don't uh, like finish the video where we are going to learn a concrete tune. So we'll put all this together and uh, let's recap the whole uh, summary uh, of the left hand pattern at least. So we've primarily learned this shape on the G G major. Just a G fifth chord and you whack the pinky first, hold it on for dear life and then play this at every and depending on the time signature or the length of the chord you want. If it's four beats, two, three, four, one, two, two, one, and, and, and if it's three, one and two and three and change, two, three, next bar, two, three, yeah. So, and then hold the pedal for that impact. That's how this technique will sound effective by playing the pedal. So hold the pedal throughout the deal. Okay. Okay. And then in the right hand, we slowly built up to it. We took just the G major scale. We looked at all the permutations which will really help build our hand independence. Then I just jammed a bit to show you hopefully the scope of this technique. You can play a variety of music. And now let's actually learn some specific music and uh, learn it well and uh, do support us on Patreon and get yourself a copy of these notes. So let's get to it. It's basically what I played in the intro video. something like that so so i'll just break down my left hand so the first three are very easy you just have to drop your pinky semitonally down g with the consistent d g d f sharp f e c e with c it's like a c major over e then E flat with a C on the top. D B. Then you have a, a C sharp with an A. D C, which is like a D seventh. So let's break that down slowly. G D. F sharp D. F D. E. C E flat C D B C sharp A D seventh or D over C and the melody Let's play that together Change to F sharp D. Okay, let's do only that. Break that down. F sharp. F D. If you're a bit uncomfortable to play so fast notes, you can do just simple. Okay, again the whole story. First four chords. Now coming to the minor. Let's break that down. That's E flat C in the bass. G A B flat in the right hand. What's that? B, G, D, which is G major chord and D, B in the left. Okay. Okay, the ending. Ta -na 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 -na. That's actually a secondary dominant chord, which is in A7th with a C sharp bass. 
Anything in the end. You can slow it there. So. Whole story again. repeat and that's the melody get yourselves a copy if you'd like you can learn the notation uh, it's available on our patreon and uh, thanks a ton for watching this lesson till the very end Uh, thanks a ton for supporting our channel it means a lot uh, do do stay on the channel uh, hit that notification bell uh, that will help subscribe if you haven't already please do that that's important and i will see you in the next one cheers